In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a generative AI solution that incorporates custom data. So we have a chatbot that actually responds with knowledge that we provided it with our own documents. To implement this solution, I'm going to need three services. The first is the Azure OpenAI service, which I've already provisioned an instance of in the East US. I also need a cognitive search service, which I've already created as well. And then third, I need a storage account. This is where I'll store the PDF files that I want to combine with the base model to augment my searches. So first, let's go ahead and upload the data files. Let me click Upload. And these are the files I'm going to upload. So a number of these are emergency airworthiness directives from the FAA to operators and manufacturers of aircraft that have various kind of important information they need to know in order to make repairs and adjustments. I have some other files in here. For example, I have a operating manual for a Boeing 747-400 for the flight crew. This is a very long document that has a lot of information about how to fly the airplane. So you can see it has schematics, a lot of text, instructions. So we're going to use that to search that later. I'm going to take all of these files and put them into my blob container. Upload. And I'll wait for those to upload. Okay, the files are uploaded. And these will be the ground knowledge that we'll introduce into our generative AI searches in our chatbot. Now let's create our open AI service. I click on go to OpenAI Studio. This is where I can create the service. On the first page, I can create a deployment from scratch. I also have a few wizards that I can walk through. One of them is what I want, bring your own data. So I'll click on that. I don't have any deployments yet. Click New Deployment. I'll choose the model. I'm just going to choose GPT-35 Turbo 16K, which works fine. The model version, only one available, but I'll pick it anyway. And the deployment name, I'm going to call this RHK Demo. Create. Now I need to specify my data source. It's from Blob Storage. It wants to know which stores, which Blob Storage service I want to use. I use that one. Which container? The one we just created. And which cognitive search resource to use? I only have one. I have to give the index a name. I'm going to call this RKI files index. And index or schedule. So it's going to be once, hourly, daily. I'll choose hourly in case I update it. I won't be adding a vector search. I do acknowledge that using the cognitive search will incur some charges to my account. Next. I want to know what kind of search I want to do. This is just going to be a basic keyword search. So there's much more sophistication I could add to this solution, but I'm going to start with a very basic keyword search, which requires no additional configuration. Next, all this looks fine. Save and close. Okay, now the indexing is complete. So I'm going to test this out by typing in a query. And the question will be, what maintenance does Airworthiness Directive 2021-2351 require? And let's see if. So here's the answer. It tells us that that directive requires operators of the GE model turbofan engines perform an inspection, and so on and so on. And depending on the inspection, still kind of long. Uh, maybe what I would like to do is see that formatted differently. So let me ask for that. And I'll say format as a bulleted list. Actually, summarize in format. Let's make it even shorter. So let's let's prompt this to get us more concise and see if it can do that. And there we go. So here's the maintenance we need to do an inspection, replace parts and report the inspection results to GE. Sounds great. And if you notice one reference, so it's actually pointed back into the index where it found that information. So if I really wanted to read this long report, I could absolutely do that. Pretty cool. OK, so it does work. And we might be saying, this is fine. This is a playground. It's great. But how would we actually use that from an actual application? So let's take a look at that next. I'll test the installation by calling it from a Python application using the OpenAI SDK. I need to provide a little bit of information, such as the deployment ID, an API key, as well as the cognitive search index name and a key for that service. And to make the call, I use the OpenAI service to create a chat completion. I pass in my question, which I'll pass in on the command line. I have to tell it that I'm the user, and the content of the prop is the question, 
which is actually passed in on the command line as argument one. I tell it what deployment ID I want to use. And here I specify that I want to use cognitive search as a data source for my custom data, giving it the search endpoint, the search key, and the index name. When the completion returns, I'll just print out the first response that I see from the OpenAI service. First, I'll test the Python application by making the same request that I did from the playground. So what maintenance does Airworthiness Directive 2021-2351 require and format it as a bulleted list? And predictably, I get pretty much the same response. I perform an inspection. I may have to replace a part. I should report the results to General Electric. Let's try one more. Let's ask, how do I start the engine on a Boeing 747? And again, briefly summarize it and format it as a numbered list. There we go. Select secondary engine indications, set two or three packs off, announce a start sequence, pull the engine, start switch, verify that I have no idea how to actually do this, but that sounds like a reasonable step list to me. Okay, so that's it. We've very quickly created a generative AI solution, brought in our own data to it, and used the power of generative AI to summarize what's in some fairly detailed documents into bulleted lists and just very easy to consume output. Uh, and this would work with really just about any data we could throw into the engine. Now, obviously, we could work it and, and you know make it even better and make it probably faster and maybe a different uh, base model would be better. But you get the idea. This is how you can use your own data using RAG to improve a generative AI solution and make it even more relevant to some business solution. I hope you found that interesting or at least educational, and I'll see you next time.